just like you Wanna be like you in everything I do Ya بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم We are continuing the discussion of the prophetic personality the prophetic guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says my master Allah has taught me and disciplined me and indeed he has given me the best discipline alhamdulillah he always linked his success and his personality and his guidance back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my brother my sister when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was being persecuted by his own people in Mecca his own family turned against him they used to throw garbage at his back they used to put filth on his back and his daughter used to come and she used to clean that away from him and they tried to attack him and his friends and they tried to actually kill him they tried all kinds of means and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him had to leave his city where he was born he had to leave Mecca his beautiful city and as he was leaving he was saying had it not been for the people that were kicking me out I would not leave you but the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had to flee and when he was fleeing what did he do what was he doing what was he thinking as he had to leave suddenly and quickly without grabbing attention and attracting attention to himself he had to leave quickly and suddenly no time to prepare much and plan what did he do what was he thinking he said how can I give back the trusts that are in my house what trusts you may say the Prophet Muhammad when before Islam and even after Islam people used to come to the city of Mecca which was a trade center and they used to buy all kinds of things and sometimes they would buy too many things that their caravans and horses cannot carry back so that they would look for someone in Mecca and they would say tell us where is your most honest man where is your most trustworthy man so we can go to him and put our belongings with him until we can come back the next year and reclaim these belongings and everybody even his enemies would say go to Muhammad because indeed he is the most trustworthy of people so all these people would put their stuff at Muhammad's house sallallahu alayhi wasallam and so his house was a storage place it was like a bank of Mecca for the people of Mecca and for the people outside Mecca to put their belongings there so when the Prophet Muhammad was getting ready to leave he was afraid that when people would come into the house looking for him they would destroy the stuff that belonged to others he was afraid that he would just leave without returning it. So what did he say? He told Ali ibn Abi Talib, his cousin, stay and sleep in my bed that night so they would think I'm still there. And then when I'm, when I'm gone, then take all the trust and return it back to the people. He can't do it himself because if he does, he would attract attention to himself. Why is he giving all the stuff back? Maybe he's trying to flee. So it had to be sudden. And when it had to be sudden, he had to give the responsibility to somebody else. So Ali ibn Abi Talib had to stay back to give all the stuff back to the people that you know were 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 uh, you know were owners of these things. Subhanallah. So look, while they're trying to kill him, what is he trying to do? While they're trying to assassinate him, he's thinking, how do I return this stuff back to them? He did not lower. His standards he did not meet their oppression and injustice with oppression or injustice he met it with kindness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ and you have not been sent except as a mercy to all of humankind my brother my sister this is the prophetic model of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my brother my sister let's continue you know when Ali ibn Abi Talib slept in the bed of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the companions much later on when they grew up and they were older and way after the Prophet Muhammad passed away they're now asking Ali ibn Abi Talib how were you as a young man able to sleep in the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, and in his bed knowing that there were enemies with their swords waiting outside he said well the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came to me and he told me oh Ali sleep comfortably and relax because no ill will touch you that night and he says I knew that the Prophet never spoke and never promised except that which was, was which was true and that which has come to him from Allah and because he promised me that I slept comfortably and peacefully that night and I was looking forward to again seeing the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed it was true because every other night no one comes to me and promises me that I would wake up and that I would be in a state of peace so there was blessing in that night and I slept more comfortably 
comfortable than many of the other nights. Maybe, perhaps, it was actually the best of sleep that he's had in his entire life. And that goes to show you how much love they had for the command and for the promise of the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Whatever he said to them, they believed and took as true and as reality, my brother, my sister. And he taught them, even though he wrestled Rukana and he beat Rukana three times, he taught them that strength is not in physical ability to dominate and overpower others and take others down. Real strength is in the ability to be patient when you are confronted with angry people, to be calm and to remain in a state of tranquility at the face of enemies and at the face of ignorance and arrogance. My brother, my sister, Omar ibn Khattab, you know, he usually what he used to do is he used to have somebody that would recite ayat in the Quran to calm him down. Anybody tried to frustrate him. So one day a man came to Omar and he was yelling at Omar. He said, Omar, you're not giving me this and this and that. He was getting so angry in front of Omar. Omar was about to yell back at him. But then this person next to him recited the ayat from the Quran. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ he recited the ayat from the Quran. Hold on to forgiveness. Imagine forgiveness is something slippery, like a fish that is slipping away. Allah is saying, hold on to it. It's not easy sometimes to hold on to, but hold on to it. وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ And begin to command the commonalities. Begin preaching and encouraging others, but speak in a way that people recognize. Speak in a manner that people can relate to. Discuss concepts in a simple manner for simple people and turn away from the ignorant. So when Umar heard this ayah, he says, the Prophet was so patient with so many people and we have to live with that standard and try to live up to that standard, my brother, my sister. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to sit down and seek forgiveness from Allah 70, 100, sometimes thousands of times every single day. And the companions used to say, why are you seeking for forgiveness when you are the, you know, you are the most perfect amongst us? And he says, shall I not also turn to Allah and ask him for forgiveness? And shall I not set an example for the people around me? He told the companions, even me, I seek forgiveness from Allah. We should always, you know, allow for our tongues to be moist with the remembrance of Allah. Not dry because our mouths are silent and just, you know, subhanAllah, observing silence. No, any time that you have respect, recite an ayah of the Qur'an, any time that you have mentioned the dhikr of Allah, any time that you have send peace and blessings upon the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and send your du'as, direct your du'as to Allah, lest, him, lest he forgive us all and make us from those who enter Jannah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to have nicknames for the people that were around him. He used to call Aisha, Aish. He had a nickname for his wife. He had a nickname for his you know, friend who was a young boy, Anas, who was with him. Him. He had a nickname for Anas, he used to call him Unais. Aba Umair, he had a nickname for even the bird that Umair had, or that young boy who's brother of Anas. So he nicknamed everybody that came across him. Zainab, he called her Zawainib. Whether a girl or a boy, he would nickname them to make them feel special, my brother, my sister. And he would remember the names. Remember when Zainab, one day, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was taking his ghusl, his shower, his major uh, ablution. And when he was taking that shower, you know, the little girl Zainab, she walked in and she was a little bit shocked. So the Prophet Muhammad didn't yell at her, didn't tell her, leave, get out, what are you doing? This is private. He didn't do any of that. He just took some of the water and sprinkled it on her face. And she's like, ah, ah, and she walked away gently. So like just not nicely, in a nice manner, he knew that he can't speak with her because she's a young girl and he can't yell at her either. In a nice manner, he made it fun for her to actually go away. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was very loving even when it comes to putting people in their proper place. My brother, my sister, every prophet 
Muhammad Sallallahu says, every prophet had a dua, one prayer that would be answered. Musa had that prayer, Ibrahim had that prayer, and all of them have prayed for something that sometimes may have been personal. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, even though he had so many personal things that he could have prayed for, he could have prayed for, you know, so many things. Imagine Allah gives you a prayer and you could definitely have it answered, but he did not pray for anything for himself. He says, Ya Allah, I want my prayer to be actually deferred to the day of resurrection when my ummah will need the mercy the most and I want you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I appeal to, for your, to your forgiveness so you can allow me to actually pray on behalf of my ummah for any shortcomings that they may have so you can overlook them and for any good that they may have done so that it can be increased by your pleasure and by your blessing my Allah this was the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him rather than having the prayer for himself or his family or for his people Imagine you could have prayed for Hassan and Hussein not to be killed or for Umar not to be killed or for any of these things you could have prayed for anything personal but no he said that the prayer that you have you know secured for me Allah I want it for my ummah in the day of resurrection when they needed the most my brother my sister the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he taught us to be subtle in everything he would point not with his finger like that he would point with his hand out of respect when giving to somebody he would give Give with the lower hand he would never give with the upper hand and that is to indicate to the person that yes you may be the one taking from me materialistic things but you're the one giving me the opportunity to invest in my relationship with my Creator my brother my sister when the people came to the house of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to eat some or to get some food Aisha would give everything that she had one day there was again a, a lamb or a sheep in the Prophet's house that was cooked and Aisha people kept asking for you know food until she gave everything but she kept the shoulder because she knew that that was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu favorite part so when the Prophet Muhammad came home he told her oh Aisha what is left she says everything is gone but the shoulder I kept for you oh Muhammad my beloved husband he told her no Aisha what is reality realistically speaking Aisha the shoulder is gone and everything that you've given has actually stayed she told him what do you mean she said he told her what you've kept we're going to eat and it's eventually going to be excreted it's going to mount to nothing but what you gave away you invested and it will actually be a means for us to attain closeness to Allah and with Allah in the hereafter so what you've spent you've kept and what you've kept you've wasted he taught his companions and taught his beloved wife my brother my sister Aisha would implement this in her life to the point where whatever money she would get from this state after the Prophet Muhammad passed away you know little help here and there she would give all of it to the people who were poor and to the people who needed it the most my brother my sister my brother my sister if you look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my brother my sister when he was approached by people who were angry all of the time he he met them with patience and respect my brother my sister and when he dealt with problems he dealt with problems in a practical manner look at slavery he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to abolish slavery to abolish distinction and differentiation based on skin color or national affiliation or racial belonging so how did he do it did he do it suddenly no there was so much that the slavery uh, you know this the, the, the whole society was rooted in slavery and if he just had that revolution of just destroying the slavery system overnight he would have destroyed the society it was not possible so what did he do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him to take him practical steps to abolish slavery so he would tell his companions things like eat from the same food that you would feed your slave from and have your slave eat from the same food that you're eating from and it's you know he created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave so many ways for the slaves to be emancipated subhanallah and the Prophet Muhammad sallam would say help your slave do the things that you're asking that slave to do and the slave will eat from the same food and wear the same clothing that you are wearing from and so he actually began to put the slave and the master on equal footing so that eventually the person would look at the slave and would treat him as a brother or a sister 
And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam told them, your slave is your brother and your sister. And this helped abolish slavery slowly so that it wouldn't crash the social, the social system or the financial system, but it would get rid of it slowly and strategically and step at a time. Such was the genuine love and at the same time brilliance of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mass presenting itself and manifesting itself in the way that he planned and dealt with problems in society. Barak Allah fikum. May Allah allow us to be from the people who love the Prophet Muhammad and for that love to be translated into action. Stay with us and we will continue inshallah in the further episodes to discuss the Prophet's character in detail. Jazakumullah khaira. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Walk like you, talk like you, read my Quran just like you. Wanna be like you in everything I do You are the closest to Allah I wanna smile like you, breathe like you Read my salah just like you Wanna be like you in everything I do Ya Rasulullah Muhammad Rasulullah Muhammad